Welcome to Inside the Film Room. I'm Chris Nurgle. Today we will talk men's and women's hoops, recap the games, and have a preview of the next. We start with head men's basketball coach Matt Figger. Coach, this is a tough stretch for the Gups with eight out of ten games on the road. How important is it this weekend to be back at home, playing the done in front of that home crowd? It's real important. I mean, we we, uh, we went through a four-game road stretch, and uh, you're always playing in front of your, your, the home crowd, especially the way we've played this season in front of the home crowd. It, it's been good. It's uplifting to our players. Um, when we have a, a good crowd and people get into the games, it, it, it does nothing but happen. The last few games have gone to a heavy zone defensive scheme against us. What are some adjustments to combat that approach? We've got to be more aggressive. We've been the past week we were, we were really, really passive uh, offensively, and that, and that put us in, a, in, in harm's way. We've got to have guys be able to attack and, and, and step up and make shots when they count. What has been the message to your team on making adjustments while continuing to play hard? It's, you know, you're going to have to deal with different schemes, and, different, and if they try to take something away, we've got to come back and combat it, and, and guys just got to play with more confidence. The team scored a combined 58 points in the paint this week. How do you keep that going? We just keep throwing it inside, uh, you, you know, and, and that's been the focus for, for teams to try to take that away from us is to keep, keep the uh, ball out of the paint. We've got to be able to do a better job on the perimeter of hitting open shots so it opens up the paint more. Steve Harris had a career night stepping into the starting lineup. What were your thoughts on his performance on both sides of the court? I, I felt like he handled the assignment really well. Um, he was aggressive. Uh, that was one thing that, that we, our team needed was a person on offense to be able to break the team off the dribble and be aggressive and um, he did a good job of that and you know I thought he did a fairly good job of, of, of uh, guarding the basketball. He's long, he's active and uh, we need more out of him like that on a consistent basis. You're undefeated at home in conference play. What makes your team so difficult to beat in the Dunn Center? I just think it's uh, something we, we've emphasized that we have to protect home court. Uh, winning games at home uh, are, are, are valuable uh, because going on the road in college basketball is you have like a 70% failure rate. So uh, when you get opportunities to play at home, you got to take the, you got to take the most of it. And, and and we have you know people who care about basketball here and, and you know. They support and, and our guys, you know, they appreciate it and, and they tend to play harder for the people at home. Eastern Kentucky has a balanced offense. They come to town. Their unit's led by Nick Mayo. What is the defensive focus looking forward to the Colonels on Thursday? They're, they're very similar to us. Um, th their leading scorer is Nick Mayo and then uh, the Dishman kid is their second leading scorer, both the four and five. So it's going to be a battle of front court and we've got a uh, we got to be able to deny him touches and make his touches be more extended and, and keep his resistance from the paint. All right, thanks, Coach. Best of luck. The Govs tip off Thursday versus Eastern Kentucky. Coming up, we'll visit with Coach David Midlake. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm with head women's basketball coach David Midlake. Coach, you came out firing against Tennessee State. What were the keys to starting so strong against a team with such a powerful presence inside? Uh, we made some shots early. I don't think anything more than that. Uh, we, we were confident. We had a good week of practice and uh, had a good first quarter shooting the basketball. Now, Tennessee State could not match your run early in the fourth quarter. What changed after the quarter break that allowed you to stretch your lead? Well, we made a few big plays right at the end of the third period to, to make it a six-point game, and, and a few players uh, off the bench, especially uh, Ariel Gonzalez-Varner, had a big uh, basket off of a missed free throw, and uh, we were able to put our starters back in who were in foul trouble, and I uh, thought they were rested, and we were able to make a final push in the fourth period. You came within three points of doing something only three teams, Oklahoma, Stanford, and Wright State have done this year, and that is beat Belmont. What were your defensive schemes against one of the most prolific offensive teams in the OVC? Well, a lot of hoping and a lot of praying that they would miss shots, <laughs> but they're a great basketball team, but I was extremely proud of our effort. I thought they got very few open looks. Um, the ones that were open, they hit them and, and they made a bunch even with a hand in their face, but uh, we really battled for 40 minutes and we hope to build on that momentum this week. Bree Furby went blow for blow with Beaumont from beyond the arc. What kind of growth have you seen from her since she stepped into that starting role? Well, Bree and her sister, Brandy, as well as the other two freshmen, uh, Maya and Kellen, they're confident. They come from good high school programs and good AAU programs, and uh, 
Bree was not shy about shooting the basketball, about scoring the ball, and about stepping up in a, in a pretty big moment on Saturday. Returning home for a two-game homestand against Eastern Kentucky and Moorhead State, what is the biggest focus this week in preparation for these upcoming games? Energy. Uh, I thought last week against Tennessee State in Belmont, uh, it, it was noticeable that he, we had more energy uh, than, than our opponent, and we've got to continue that. There's a multitude of other things that we want to do X's and O's wise, but the main thing is that we are, we are ready to compete and ready to bring energy on the court at 515 on Thursday. Brianne Alexander has been so efficient in conference play, averaging 12.5 points per game. What makes her so successful against OVC opponents? Well, she's able to go inside and out uh, with the basketball. What I mean is she can catch it at 15 feet and make that shot and also drive to the basket. And she can also play with her back to the basket and have some post moves uh, underneath. So she's been, she's been really good for us these first eight games and has really, st really stepped up last week. All right, thanks, Coach. Best of luck. Coming up, we go one-on-one -on -one with Bree Alexander. Welcome back. I'm with Bree Alexander, center for the Governors. You're leading the team in scoring and steals, the second on the team in rebounding during conference play. What makes you play so well during the conference season? I think just knowing that every game is do or die. We have to win to make it to the tournament, and we want to win. Um, this is one of the best teams I've been on since I've been at Austin P. so making sure that we're competing at the highest level, I think, has really pushed me to get into my stride and see what's the last part of the season. You're doing just that. Coach Midlick has talked about your patience on the offensive end, facing up and driving against competition. How do you feel your offensive role has developed this season? Um, I think just noticing that some of the plays are like focused on me scoring the ball. Um, we run a play where I'm isolated at the elbow and my coaches have been practicing with me and talking to me about how I can effectively score the ball. So I think just being a little more patient and realizing, hey, you can actually score has been good. You tied a career high with 23 points against Belmont. How are you able to be so effective against taller opponents? I think it's just a challenge for me. I feel like when someone's taller, people on the scout, they'll say, hey, she's a really good post player. I try my hardest to like match that up and match that intensity. Um, I've actually played against Sally uh, for like the last eight years for our, basically our whole basketball career. So. I kind of know her, and with her being taller, I'm a little quicker. So using that just kind of helped me get to the basket. Using your advantage. Austin P is the first OVC team since UT Mark back in December to come within single digits of Belmont. What did you do to make the Bruins and your team so uncomfortable on their home floor? Um, I think we were just aggressive. Every single person was locked into the scout. We knew, you know, what players were doing. When we made mistakes, we were quick to adjust. We never let them get so far ahead. If they got a three, then we came on the other end and we tried to combat that. So I think, honestly, just being aggressive and tough the entire time, rebounding, making sure that we were all in their face, truly made them uncomfortable. This is your senior season. You reflect back on that decision to become a governor and, and what things have you enjoyed here and what things are left to accomplish? Um, I think it was a great decision for me to choose Austin P. Um, actually, my freshman year, there was a coaching staff change and I remember like being kind of nervous and just wondering, do I need to stay here? Where do I go? And I think it was a great decision for me to stay here. Um, I found family with the team, outside of the team, a church home. Um, I found so many great things here in Clarksville. And I think, like I said before, this is truly the best team I've been on here. It's really fun, the sisterhood, and just knowing that I can just be me. And with the coaching staff, with the players, um, with our fans, um, I think in the next part of the season, I just want to win. I truly want to bring home a championship for Austin P. I I think watching my friends on the volleyball team, my friends on the football team, it's now culture for Austin P. to win. Absolutely. Best of luck. Thanks so much. Now, Gov fans, pack the dun on Thursday. The women tip off with Eastern Kentucky at 515, and the men will follow that matchup. Both teams host Moorhead State on Saturday, starting at 430, and the men at 7. For tickets, head over to letsgop.com. Thanks so much for watching Inside the Film Room. I'm Chris Nurgle. We'll see you next time.